Rockpool was our first restaurant and it really reflects the fact that we were going to be a seafood restaurant and the really wonderful thing from my childhood is playing in the rock pools of Sydney, all the wonderful little crabs and fishes that we used to catch in there and we decided from that to, to call the restaurant Rock Pool. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rock Pool's 10th anniversary party. I'm Tim Walker, General Manager of the Australian Chamber Orchestra. Neil and Trish, you've invited us all here to celebrate the success of Rockpool over the past 10 years. We commissioned a piece of music for the event, so we chose Peter Sculthorpe, who of course is one of our most prominent composers, took him to the restaurant quite a few times so he could soak up the ambience, and this piece, which is called Rockpool Dreaming, is a result of his impressions of Neil's world-famous restaurant. And it needed something with just a touch of Asia. In it. The relationship between music and cooking or creating a dish has come more since the piece was finished because at rehearsal we were taking things out and putting things in like you know, when you're creating a dish and tonight before the performance at the party I'm going to give um, send a message to the double basses because I want them to change a few notes it's just like putting a bit, bit of mustard or herbs or something and being a composer really is rather, you know, a bit like being a chef. We've got to get the dish right. Here is a short tribute in music. Rockpool Dreaming was inspired by your achievements. Rockpool is actually a reflection of sort of the more the multiculturalism of Australia, which is, you know, Asian and Eastern and Western and, and, and sort of living in a kind of harmony as we do here in Sydney. And that's what's terrific about Australia these days is when the barbie gets fired up, it's fabulous seafood, beautiful meat, great vegetables and wonderful mixtures of, of Asian flavours and, and Western flavours. The climate works beautifully for the sort of food that, that is cooked in Asia and all that wonderful produce is grown here. For us, you know, a culture is defined by food, art, um, a lot of uh, you know, fashion, music, all the things that we like to be involved with in as a restaurant group. I think our partnership works so well because Neil and I actually grew up as friends, as kids. Our families were very close, being first cousins, and we formed a bond that has just never been broken. The opening of Rockpool was just uh, incredible. Um, it was just so different to any other restaurant in town. Neil was just cooking fantastic food, you know, absolutely, completely different to anything else that Sydney had seen. I'll say now, 10 years later, it's, it's 10 times better because he's kept, kept working at that. Whenever I'm taking a friend of mine that hasn't been there to have dinner, I get really excited and, uh, and, and feel very proud, you know, very proud of what we've achieved. But really, these awards are all about the, the philosophy of the restaurant. They really sort of give us a big tick for going through the whole process. It's produce driven and it's uh, the philosophy of generosity and hospitality. I started Rockpool at 1989. When I started there, I was just amazed by Neil himself. He spent so much time in the kitchen with, with everybody. The basic philosophy is the food, yeah. It, the, the freshness of produce, um, the, the service to the customer, you know, trying to every day, trying to put out the absolute, the maximum, the best you can absolutely do, hasn't, hasn't changed over those 10 years. The reason Qantas approached Neil Perry was that we really wanted to do something quite exciting and quite different with our food. That was a really a thrilling, uh, I guess, a thing for Trish and I to be involved in, to be asked by a company that employs 30,000 people and is an Australian icon to work with them to improve their food and service was uh, terrific for us. And they've been excellent in training people and passing on this enthusiasm and, and great joy in, in preparing the food and serving the food. It's brought style, uh, it's brought renewed enthusiasm and we're extremely pleased. It's been really good to have Neil Perry as a, a supporter of like individual small producers like we are at Primo Estate and I guess that's a basis of our relationship uh, is that he, he really understands individuality well, with our wines and uh, with our extra virgin olive oils. I'd always really been interested in, in, in Thai cooking and Asian cooking, but you know, Chinese cooking was my first love. The complexity, the balance, 
the integrity and the intensity of it. And we started working to bring this wonderful fresh ingredients to Sydney. We were one of the first people to start to bring it down directly and use it in our restaurants. And over the period of uh, four to five years later, this started to appear in Chinatown. And now, wonderful thing about it is Galanga, lime leaves are now in supermarkets and, and in all vegetable shops. Rockpool was really born from Rockpool, where we could totally concentrate on what we did Asian. And Rockpool is actually a reflection of of sort of the more the multiculturalism of Australia, which is, you know, Asian and Eastern and Western, and we are reverent to where the food has come from and the philosophies that evolve around that. And in the same fashion that we do the food here at Wapool, it's so easy for people at home to transport those sort of flavours in a very simple fashion into things like great barbecues. The fundamental cornerstone of all rock pools cooking is the quality produce. Nothing is truer than that than the seafood we use. We really go to extraordinary lengths to get the best fish. We deal directly with export fishermen who catch the fish, line caught and ice slurry it immediately to bring on rigor mortis. Shishimi quality kingfish. We can just see that fish is undergoing rigor mortis. It's that fresh, completely stiff. Really great for eating raw. Again, the snapper, the colour and the vibrance in the flesh. That really wonderful sea slime, which is really important. Blue eye, one of our staple fish in New South Wales, but when it's caught and killed properly, and again, that fish undergoing rigor mortis, it's just beautiful. And again, another local fish, sand whiting, which um, is one of the premium fish. Great sashimi and fantastic pan fried or grilled. But this mud crab is destined to be on the barbecue today. Really simple, people don't think about crustaceans apart from lobsters when they're barbecuing. We'll just barbecue it, crisp up the outside and really just toss it in a really light Asian dressing which would be fantastic. Kylie's been with me for years now working at Rockpool and has been the head chef at Rockpool since it started about four years ago. And the black bean is uh, really nice and simple to put together. Yes, cut up some ginger really finely, take some red capsicum and cut it up into small squares. Same with Spanish onion. We'll add some salty Chinese black beans to it. We're going to add some soy sauce, we use peanut oil, Korean bean paste and mirin and sake. We use it for crayfish, sometimes dressing for steamed fish. It's also quite nice with stir fry with beef. And it's really just a very simple black bean and chilli dressing, not, not really a sauce. We use soy from Japan, mirin from Japan, sake with Chinese fermented black beans and Korean hot bean paste to really give it some strength and um, texture in the mouth as well as really nice hot flavour. So it's sort of, uh, if you like, I guess it's an Australian um, black bean and chilli sauce. Oh mate, what I needed was a bain marie with water. For, for my... For the barbecue. Well, no, I've got one spoon. That's all I could get okay. to do my different sauces. This is a Joseph Grilly Columbard. This one is fabulous with seafood. It, it just actually says Sydney, it says summer. So Trish and I, my partner, she's been involved in the madness of Rockpool for the last 10 years, and she's still standing there smiling. I might add that my career as a professional bottle opener has ended some 15 years ago. Trish? Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to 10 years, mate. 10 years down the hatch. I, f I feel like Heineken and Huey on a bad day. <laughs> Today we're doing four really quick simple dishes on the barbecue. A really lovely grilled whiting that's going to be very much in a Mediterranean fashion just with some olive oil and some lemon juice and some char grilled asparagus. A swordfish steak which is fantastic. We've got a mud crab that will again barbecue and simply tossed with some black bean uh, and, and chilli dressing. And lastly, the beautiful blue eye, which is gonna have a really simple Thai salad with a nam jim made with lime, fish sauce and palm sugar. And a few simple vegetables and herbs added to it. So where I might start is by simply just barbecuing the tomatoes. Nice hot barbecue, it's really important. Lots of salt on there. Some olive oil. Now for the whiting dish I'm going to do exactly the same with the asparagus. I'm just going to tear it in half and get it on the barbecue. 
Both these vegetables will take about 10 minutes to cook through. Just sort of pay attention to the asparagus. It can be either flat grilled or char grilled. I like it rather than actually blanching it. I like barbecuing because it intensifies the flavour. You're not using any water. So more salt. At this stage we might start barbecuing the fish that goes with the asparagus. So what we're doing is a beautiful whole whiting. Because it's whole, we want to put some diagonal cuts into the fish to allow it to cook a little bit quicker and a little bit more evenly. Again, a nice brush with oil. Season with salt. And on the barbecue. It's really important at this stage to not continually turn it, whether it's meat or fish, you cook it on one side and then turn it and cook it on the other. It stops the juice from draining when you're piercing it with tongs or fork and it also allows the fish to cook evenly through one side and then start through the other. So next we can start cooking the swordfish. Again, oil, seasoning with salt. With this particular fish, because it's a nice big steak, I'm actually going to turn it a quarter turn and get a nice char uh, pattern on it, which is just really for presentation, nothing to do with quality of the food. The asparagus is really starting to cook through now. And again, just like when we're blanching it, we don't want to overcook it, but we just want it to be nice and crunchy and a nice charred flavour. To this particular dish, I'm going to add some olives, some small capers, some lemon juice, a little bit of chopped garlic, and olive oil, extra virgin. Some more salt and uh, pepper, which is good to do on not such a windy day because it all blows away. This swordfish steak is now ready to turn. So by turning it at 45 degrees, I'm getting a nice grill mark pattern. The whiting's also starting to cook through now. So I'm cooking it for a longer period of time, four to five minutes on one side and about three on the other because the heat's already starting to penetrate. In with the asparagus, these can be cooked up, a, a cut up a little bit smaller if you wish. And uh, some continental parsley is nice with this particular dish. So I'm turning the whole fish. Really important to get a really nice crisp exterior so that you get that texture change between the crunchy skin and the beautiful succulent flesh inside. So again, just a little bit of extra olive oil, just marinating. A little tiny bit of salt. Rather than adding all the salt in one go, we just continually keep putting the salt in. The swordfish steak is now ready to turn. So again, with the swordfish, we really want to cook it about four or five minutes on one side and two or three minutes on the other to make sure that it's actually nice and medium rare and, and very succulent on the inside. For the blue-eyed dish, I've got some chili sliced, some spring onions and some Spanish onions. I'm just going to add the nam jim. So we've just got ginger, garlic, chili, fish sauce, palm sugar and lime juice. I'll just let that marinate for a little while and when I'm about to serve I'll add fresh herbs, mint, coriander. Hello there, how are you? I've seen you for ages. Still around? And now we can start to cook the mud crab. Oil. Seasoning. Some more oil on the flat plate. And we're literally cooking the shellfish through the shell when it reddens up. It should be really nice and moist inside. Then we'll just toss it with the black bean and chili. So the first two dishes are ready. Very simply just plate the whiting. And you're literally adding the salad on top. So something that looks good, looks fresh, really vibrant and very simple to prepare at home. So we simply plate the swordfish, take a bowl, place in the tomatoes, give them a really good 
washing up. Leave the skins on, it's a nice interesting texture. You'll see all those juices running out and the really terrific char flavour going through it. Again, little salt, some good quality Cabernet vinegar, some oil, pepper, and I really like to add either fresh tarragon or uh, fresh uh, dill to this mix. And again, this is just a really delicious sauce. Looks really vibrant. And this is a sauce that we use at Rockpool with all manner of fish, lamb, it's fantastic. And it's so easy to prepare. Just roast fish or barbecue fish, roast meat, and put this wonderful dressing on it. It really brings it to life. So now while we're actually finishing off the crab, we're going to put the blue eye on. Again, we want to cook this more medium to well done, but we want it to be really succulent in the centre. So again, it's maybe four or five minutes, maybe two or three on the other side. It starts to firm up to the touch um, and you'll be able to tell quite simply when it's cooked. But really the best idea is to take it off, give it a couple of minutes rest so that it gets the opportunity just to set through and be really silky textured. Again, I'm turning the fish 45 degrees. The dish that I'm doing with the blue eye is a Nam Jim Thai salad. We've got Spanish onions, shallots, chili, and adding to that fresh coriander and mint. It's also really terrific with roasted peanuts or cashew nuts. With the mud crab, the black bean and chili dressing is really something that we were doing when we first started playing around with different Asian flavors and marrying Japanese, Chinese things together so that it is actually quite a unique sauce. So again, we've got some really beautiful char marks on it. We're going to cook this through until it's really silky textured in the center. Very important that the moisture in the fish is maintained. Okay, I'm ready to pull this out. Okay, with the mud crab, we're just going to set it up and dress it like as if it was a salad. The black bean and chili that we made before. And just finish off with chopped shallots. And that is a really simple crowd pleaser. The blue eye we now take to the side of the barbecue where it's nice and cool and allowed to rest while we essentially plate the salad up. Fish is presented on top. Okay. Now these four dishes really represent the multicultural nature of Sydney and Australia where we have wonderful Asian ingredients sitting right next to beautiful Mediterranean ingredients that work perfectly on a great Australian barbecue. Here we go. Quality of the fish really shines through. Look at that fish cooked to perfection. Incredible. That's why you do the cooking and I do the thumbs. <laughs> Broken Hill, I've always wanted to come here and now I'm here to see our good friend Pro Hart. Can't wait to see the gallery and uh, cook up a barbie with him. Mate, I only just got on that aeroplane. I have really fond memories of the Australian outback, the wonderful red earth, the incredible ruggedness of it, the forgiving temperature, the heat, but it's somehow just uh, something that makes you realise what being Australian is all about. Coming from the city, it's actually quite a moving experience. It doesn't uh, matter where you are in Australia these days, you can hunt down some good produce, you can make some simple marinades or some good olive oil or some interesting Asian products and really make something that's delicious and tasty. You know, really the underlying factor is lovely and simple and easy to prepare. Mate, watch out for that bench behind you. 
going through the, the stores in Broken Hill and looking around for stuff was great. I was quite surprised at the, at the variety and the quality that was available in a, in a town you know, so remote. There were still great fresh vegetables. There was still really terrific meat that tasted great on the barbecue. They're big eaters out in Broken Hill. They are, aren't they? Broken Hill, better go to. Yeah, yeah, good. Nice barbecue. That's a lot then. 56 dollars. And then really bring some rock pool flavours out here. We're going to make an anchovy paste. It's a really simple process. You just need really a blender or a food processor or even a spice grinder. Anchovies, garlic, salt, pepper, red wine vinegar of good quality and olive oil and that's it. You just basically whack it all in together and blend it up. So in with the anchovies, a clove of garlic, a little bit of salt, vinegar, olive oil, and what we're doing is blending it to sort of a mayonnaise consistency. Put it all in. And put your blender on. Fantastic on meat. Really nice anchovy paste. Mmm. Getting out to Pro's place and having a look around his gallery, which is just fantastic. I mean, he's got so many great works of art, just some great old memorabilia. I mean, it's, it's absolutely worth a visit. Anyone going anywhere near Broken Hill has got to dive into his gallery. Uh, have a poke around and see some really, really fantastic stuff. Yeah, there's a couple of machine guns in there, but I had a brand new one and I thought if I weld it in, then you've got to explain it all the way and I thought he stirred the camp up a bit. <laughs> and uh, they all know what it means. See the two cannons there? Yeah. They were locked up in the cock shop. <laughs> really? Yeah, we were using cannons to, to, to paint. Oh, that's paint right. Them, yeah. That's illegal. So they locked me flaming cannons up. Weld them up. That's a uh, uh, little painting there. That's our sheep station. Actually, this is quite interesting because uh, that's where I started painting here on that veranda, and that's a, a sheep station out on, well, it's a long way from here. Is that with your family where you're from? Yeah, yeah, that is our station, and uh, I didn't get ever get influenced by any other artists because you've never ever seen any other artists out there. It's just us, you know. Yeah. This is quite an interesting painting. It's called the Hill of Glory. One of my best paintings. That's that was used on the telephone directory. All right. Hmm. When you're doing something like this, you'll do. Will you do a? Will you do sketchings and studies of it first, or you? I just build it. Just yeah, okay. I'll leave it to the Lord. Leave it to the black up top. I never plan anything. Right. Yeah. So, pro, when you, you said, "Oh, you'll never sell that," what what do you do with a lot of your art? Do you decide I, the ones you're going to keep, and yeah, you decide the ones you're going to sell? Just take paint. You know, there's you know, there's about eight months' work in there. All oh, right. Mm. You get a lot of, and the average person they'll say, "Isn't he prolific?" Because mm. I've got a lot of paintings in there. But it's taken about 40 years to get them. Yeah, yeah. If I painted one every three years, it'd still be the same painting. So yeah. People are funny like that. They, they, I don't know, they sort of think you're prolific. I'm not prolific at all, really, you know? Yeah, I mean, one of the really fantastic things about going up there was to, he did this great painting for me on the lid of a barbecue, and it's come up so well. The barbecue in the backyard, <laughs> which is quite a common event around here. I'm sure. Yeah. The finishing touch. Finishing touch. <laughs> nice, yeah. A couple of birds flying in the air. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, they'd be pretty unique. I can't. I don't think there'd be too many other barbecue be, lids painted. It'll be the only one. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a really nice, simple barbecue tonight, guys. We're going to have some lovely lamb steaks from the leg, with a shimola, which is a Moroccan dressing made from nice spices and herbs and lots of olive oil. And we're going to have some chicken that's barbecued and served with mirin and soy and sake, a bit like teriyaki, but really simple to put together. And a really beautiful rib of beef with anchovy mayonnaise. And then just a lovely salad and some lovely barbecued vegetables, which are great. So I might get the beef on. I really love using grass-fed meat, not grain-fed, because I think it tastes better. It's not so fatty. And it's good to seal it on a really hot barbecue.
and not to continue to turn it again, which is cooking it on one side and then the other and then resting it for a few minutes. While we're just waiting for the meat to start, I'm going to start cooking some eggplant. This is a really nice way of cooking it because it actually doesn't take too much oil on, as opposed to when it's fried. So we can start cooking a few other vegetables. Whoa! Some oil on the hot plate. Some red peppers. The whole idea of this is that it's really like a summer salad that's barbecued first, then just served at room temperature with some really good quality oil, some really lovely vinegar, or just lemon juice. And the idea is with the vegetables, we just want to soften them and give them some colour. We've got the lamb steak with chamola, which again is just a really simple marinade, fresh coriander, fresh parsley, garlic, onions, and some nice spices, and really simple. We want to give the meat a really nice crust and cook it about medium rare. Is that how everyone likes their meat? No? Well done. I knew you were going to be difficult. First you don't like anchovies, and then you like well done steak. So it's really quite easy and the really good thing about it is that you should be able to not spend too much time at the barbecue and spend um, more time with your friends. Too often people keep flicking things around all the time and it doesn't allow the meat to cook properly. With this salad, it's really simple, nice fresh vegetables, really good oil, good vinegar, sea salt, if you freshly grind pepper, you get a really different flavour. So it's really worth using really great products. And it's much easier if everybody's not watching you actually. It smells great. <laughs> but such is life. It would probably take about 15 or 20 minutes all up for us to finish all the vegetables and all the meat. The steak's going to cook for about 10 minutes and the lamb for about 10 or 12 and the chicken for about 10 so we'll get that on shortly. Black grill chuggle, it doesn't really matter and if you're using natural wood then you get even better flavour. If the barbecue is actually hot enough this mix will blacken quite a bit but it's actually really delicious like that. You just pour lemon juice over it and it's got a really great flavour. So next on here we're going to put the chicken. Which again is just marinated in Japanese style teriyaki that's really easy to make. But the sauce is just mirin, sake and a half part Japanese soy and garlic and a bit of chilli. And don't do what I'm doing, I'm trying to put too much on the barbecue so it'll be finished in time. <laughs> and it's great if the eggplant gets that sort of colour. Because again, it just adds really lovely char flavour to the salad. Any questions from the audience? <laughs> Come on guys, you can think of something. What about when you marinate? Well, marination can do a couple of things, add flavour and there to add tenderness. Some of these marinades can actually burn really easily, so you just have to kind of really, really watch that. The whole process of cooking meat at high heat is that all the moisture starts to move in fairly vigorously to the centre, which is why if you take something straight off the barbecue and cut it, it actually bleeds. And then if you actually rest it and allow the juice to move back out from the centre because it's not being pushed away from the hottest part, it actually sets it and uh, makes it more juicy all the way through and tender. So I'll put the sausages on the grill. Do the kids like their sausages charred? Yep. Same principle, don't move them around too much, just let them caramelise and, and Get a nice crust on one side, then move them through to the other. Oh, there's a double. And with barbecues, the heat normally runs from the top as the hottest section through the middle part down to the cooler section here at the front. You'll be aware that you might have to juggle it around to get it to cook properly as far as the heat zones are concerned. Three men cook the best barbecues. No, women are beautiful cooks. 
They're fantastic. I love it when you can have a char plate like this and you actually get that really wonderful smoky flavour because that's what a barbecues are all about. It really makes you nostalgic. You know, kegs of beer, lots of out of hand adults. Dad burning stuff on the barbecue. The really nice thing about barbecuing, I guess, is that it's just such a major part of Australian culture. We need somebody to be the salad chef. So what we need to do on those two platters, there's some cos lettuce leaves that have been washed. And um, then I'm just going to throw the avocado, the cherry tomatoes, the bacon, the cheese over the top. Our salads are really an important part because, again, we just don't want to be eating huge hunks of meat. So it's important that we get a balance, not only in your diet, but in the texture and flavour of your food. My goodness, that's hot. I've just pureed up some really beautiful anchovies and made a really simple anchovy mayonnaise. And I'm sure even the people who don't like anchovies are going to like it. The meat should be reasonably firm to touch. If you push it, you get a really nice spring back. When it's rare, or very rare, it's quite soft, which that is there. So we know that it's not quite ready. So is somebody doing the salad? Done. Okay. It's really interesting actually because I've been sort of investigating some um, beer recipes with not, not too much success and I think it's easier to actually produce food that actually works really nicely with beer, beer yeah. than necessarily use beer in the barbecue. Really nice glass of red wine goes really well. Wine is very good for the chef. Sometimes the chef goes out on strike if he doesn't get, get enough wine. We're just about there. From start to finish, doing this is probably going to take about 20, 25 minutes, but we're cooking quite a, quite a bit of food. Fish will cook in about eight minutes, and most meat would be 20 minutes maximum if you were doing it well done. You should always wear your chef's apron, otherwise you get stains on your T-shirt. And what can be really fantastic through here is lots of uh, fresh continental parsley Oops. or some dill. Stir it all through, mix it up, lots of nice olive oil, extra virgin, vinegar, red wine, balsamic, lemon juice. Thank you Seamus. And about a third of the percentage of, of vinegar to, to oil, sea salt, thank you, beautiful. Okay, I think we can sort of start having dinner. What do you think? Good idea? <laughs> Alright. No, the salad looks great. It's just the sort of smell of the, all the vegetables sort of nice and caramelised. It's really yummy. You haven't seen this family eat. <laughs> Might not be none left for you guys. Well, I'd just like to thank Pro and the family. I mean, I had the best time out there. It was great to see some people who had that great traditional Australian generosity of laying on a big barbecue. Fantastic. Lots of family. All the kids all the daughters and sons, pro, and it was just brilliant, you know, feeling part of the family immediately. And it's just getting right back to that great old fashioned hospitality, which is so rife out in the bush in Australia. And here we've got some anchovy, for those who like it. Some anchovy mayonnaise just to put on the steak. Now one of the things we did up at Pro's place was our anchovy paste. Anchovies, olive oil, red wine vinegar, garlic, really, really simple. The big thing was for Pro, he loved it so much. I had to send him not only the recipe, but a few tins of anchovies as well. And I've got the story back that he needs more supplies. So I think he really fell in love with it. I think just um, seeing, seeing us doing a bit of cooking in Sydney and, and, and Broken Hill, that uh, you know, whether it be the you know the great Aussie barbecue with lots of lots of meat or or wonderful seafood Asian sort of style barbecue, that it's just a great way to cook. It's so Australian. It's part of the Australian psyche and culture, 
um, and it delivers a great deal of freshness and, and spontaneity. You can throw Asian flavours at it, you can throw just simple olive oil, tomato sauce, fresh salad, it doesn't matter. Uh, as long as you're looking at sort of barbecuing with good quality product, um, you cook it well, uh, then it's just put the spread on and enjoy. It.